Hey everybody, welcome back to Jimmy's promo and today is November 18th and Samsung is pushing out another update to the Galaxy S20 series that's running on the Samsung One UI 3.0 beta program. So what's significant about this update here today is that this is the fifth update and we just got done updating this phone four days ago. Now yesterday, the Galaxy Note 20 series had an update and that was a pretty large update that also gave you the security patch of December 1st. So with the Galaxy Note 20 getting the December 1st patch and the update yesterday for the Galaxy S20 series getting another update from just four days ago, uh, and it's one that's pretty small, the thing that's significant about all of this that's happening here is that Samsung is getting super close for the full public release, the full public launch of Samsung One UI 3.0. Now this one is gonna be pretty small. I don't really know exactly what is all brand new, but in order for you to notice if there is something new, uh, if you are part of the beta program, is go inside of the Samsung members application. So let's head right back home. So once you open up the Samsung members application, it takes you to the screen here. Then you go inside of that bell on the very top. Then you can see right here, November 18th, fifth beta software update. If you look right over here, it happened just a few days ago for the fourth beta update. But here we go. It's gonna give us the information here. Uh, the software version now will end in ZTKD. So if this one ends in ZTKD, the one that I'm running right now that we updated to four days ago, uh, this one is running ZTKA. So, you know, not a huge difference there. Again, still the uh, November 1st security patch. It looks like the bugs that have been fixed is the device stability improvement, bug fixes, and or enhancement features, further improvements to performance. So what this tells me right here is that this is usually what states when you get any other update, any other software update, they didn't have that full list of all this other stuff. So that means that they are now testing the stability of these normal, small little updates that would normally be pushed out. So yes, it is a really good thing to see these small little updates, the everyday things that you always see, because when you take a look right here for that downloading of the information here, this is what it always states in this little you know software update page. This just means that they're getting back to normal. They're testing what a normal push out would be, all those small little improvements and, and things like that. Now, if you don't know where you can go to find this update, after you read the Samsung members you know, application and it states that there's an update, go inside of your settings, then you go inside of your software update, then underneath software update, go to download and install. This is where you find it and then you hit on download. Now it's still gonna be the November 1st patch. If this was December 1st, that would give a big, you know, huge key you know, giveaway. But my guess is the, the very next update that we'll see here is probably gonna be a couple weeks. And then that will give us, uh, you know, obviously that December 1st patch. And my guess is that, again, that full public release of 3.0 is going to be coming out in December. And that would be for the Note devices and the Galaxy S20 devices. So the Note 20, S20 devices getting the update, my guess, in December, since they're basically gearing up and getting ready for it. All the rest of the devices, everybody keeps asking, that's more than likely going to be January and February. Samsung always pushes out the rollout, you know, the, the, the rollout dates of the newer phones first. So this is usually the point in the video where I state if you guys are brand new here at the channel of Jimmy's Promo, if you guys appreciate these tips, tricks, tutorials, latest information on all of these updates here, literally up to the moment, you will not be able to find this on any other channel. Make sure you guys hit on that subscribe button as well as the bell for notifications so you get notified for all future videos. Now the update is done and complete. There's really not much to really take a look at because this was more of a test of them pushing out over the air updates, making sure that it's gonna be working well after you had you know, the previous updates. So this again is just proof that they're getting super close to this update. But if you guys are not really that familiar with some of the new things, some of the fun stuff is when you go inside of your phone dialer or the phone application. On the very top right hand side, you can go inside of your settings. And then over here, you can change your call background. So you're able to change the layout if you want it to look like this, or if you want it to look like that. You'd also be able to change the way that your background looks. So if you want to have kind of like a pulsating bluish color, you can also put in a video. You can put in all of the different pictures if you wanted to. Uh, so we can do something like this where it almost looks like two moons or I don't know what the heck is going on, but you can set this one as your background. So now anytime you get a phone call, you send a phone call, this is something that you'll be able to see. Uh, and if you put in a video, if there is sound, you'd actually be able to have that sound be the ringtone. Uh, for the call display, you can have it as either full screen, pop-up, 
mini pop-up. You can even turn on this option here for keep calls and pop-up. Uh, one of the really nice features is that you're able to double tap the screen to make it go to sleep. Um, you know, that's a pretty big deal, especially if you're using navigation in your car. So in order for you to actually turn this on, you wanna go inside of your settings, then you wanna go all the way down into advanced features. Now inside of advanced features, uh, you can see that some things have kind of moved around a little bit, uh, but what you wanna look for is going to be the uh, uh, motions and gestures. Now inside of motions and gestures, this is where you can turn on that double tap to turn off the screen option. Uh, this is the rest that is sitting there. Um, the other thing is that when you go inside of the camera, when you press and hold anywhere on the screen, you have an updated area for the auto exposure lock. You can also change the brightness uh, right here. So it does look just a little bit different than before. Then when you head inside of your single take, I believe this is a part of only Samsung Win UI 3.0, but you can change the settings for single take, how long you want it to take the picture. If you set it for only five seconds, it's not gonna take as many pictures and videos and as many filters as you would if you did it as 10 seconds but then that wouldn't be as much as you did it for 15. So if you wanted to have longer videos, longer hyperlapse videos, more filters, different angles of the same situation you're in, you just take the picture one time, hit the shutter button, and it's gonna capture all of that for you for about 15 seconds here. Uh, earlier, it was only set at 10 seconds. So you weren't even able to change that even down to five. So another really cool added feature. And then obviously the settings menu has changed. Also this uh, blurring of the background here has completely changed. So it used to look a little bit different on Samsung One UI 2.5. Uh, the devices and media used to be down over here. They put it up front and center and uh, kind of moved around where the brightness would be and a few other things. Uh, then you're gonna have your settings on the very top. Now, a couple of the settings that has also changed and moved around is usually if you went inside of your edge lighting, it was inside of display. Now the edge lighting uh, is underneath notifications. And you wanna make sure that if you have detailed turn on, you will not have edge lighting working. You have to make sure you have it as brief. You wanna choose the applications you want it to work with. Then you go to brief pop-up settings, and this is where you can change all of your edge lighting styles. Uh, so, you know, a few of these things has kind of moved around, changed around. Then another thing that has been changed is going to be with the settings for your power modes. So if you press and hold on this power saving mode, it actually made it very simple. You can just either turn it on, turn it off, save a little bit of background, uh, you know, usage and things like that. Or you turn on maximum power saving mode. So this is limiting the apps and the home screen. So if you want to really save a ton of battery, you can go there. The other location of where this one is located is when you go inside of the settings, then you're going to take a look for the battery and device care. You go inside of battery, and this is where you can also, again, turn on all that stuff there. Uh, background usage limits, so you can ch you know play with uh, sleeping apps, deep sleeping apps, but then you also have more battery settings here. So mine is always turned on with that adaptive battery. Uh, and then you also have enhanced processing. So if you wanted to kind of enhance everything, put it to its maximum, you know, CPU, GPU, everything else, then this is what you would be looking for. So it's all been kind of changed a little bit with Samsung One UI 3.0 versus 2.5. But I hope you guys have liked this video. If you guys did, please give this thing a huge thumbs up. Don't forget to hand subscribe, subscribe right over here in the very bottom left hand side. And if you like this video, then more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.